Hey everybody! So I have now shared with you all our possibly exciting news that we are looking into getting a puppy at the moment. Another golden retriever puppy it is. And I just wanted to share with you guys a little bit about the process that I am going to go through and I am going through at the moment in terms of finding a good breeder, finding the right dog for us this time round. So when you are looking to add a new dog into your family, it's really important that you consider your life situation, your lifestyle, the environment the pup's going to be living in and all those things. There are so many different factors to, to take on board and to really consider beforehand. For us, we have a nine-year-old golden retriever already who, you know, once they hit that age, they're in their senior years already. We have three children. By the time we decide to get the puppy, um, our kids will be three, six, or nearly six, and seven, seven and a half. Uh, as I mentioned in my last video, it is slightly younger than what I usually recommend for families getting puppies. That age three um, is a little bit below the developmental age that I like to introduce puppies with children. For us, the decision was made because if we wait that extra year or two, it's just going to not be fair on Cooper. And it is absolutely circumstantial. I'm a dog trainer. I work with families with kids and puppies. My expectations of what is going to happen bringing a puppy into the home is realistic because I see it every day in my job. I know it's not going to be easy, but I am up for the challenge. Uh, we are going to get baby gates and play pens and we're going to get everything set up to make sure that the puppy has its own space, that Cooper has his own space, that kids have their own space, all that sorts of thing, all that sort of stuff. So our house will be totally sectioned off initially. Anyway, the breeder process, that's what we're talking about today. So it is a really, really challenging place to go if you don't know where to start, if you don't know where to look. So um, the Australian National Kennel Club, the ANKC, that is the governing body in Australia of ethical, reputable, purebred breeders. So that is a great place to look on their website. They have fantastic information. Also, once you know the breed that you are choosing as well, you can go onto their specific website. So for example, Golden Retrievers, there's a Golden Retriever Club of Victoria website, which also has great resources and a great list of breeders. Dogs Victoria is the body that sits under the ANKC for Victoria. Uh, you're going to have the same in all the different states. There's going to be a governing body underneath uh, that is represented by the ANKC. So you want your breeder to be a member of one of these. This is really important, okay? There are so many backyard breeders out there. There are so many puppy farms out there. The, the, the stuff that I love about this is educating you guys on why it's important not to support puppy farms and the real reason is because I want you to get your dog from a place that treats dogs kindly humanely and more importantly I want you to understand the impact that these first eight weeks of life can have on your dog's future life on their temperament on their personality their genetics play a huge huge part and how the mum is treated during pregnancy and then how the pups are treated in the first eight weeks where they spend with the breeders can have a significant impact on your dog. So whilst I don't want you to support this terrible industry of puppy farming and backyard breeders and that sort of thing, it's not just because I don't want you to support them, it's because I want to help to set you up for success in your family and I want you to get a dog that um, has the a great start to life. So we want a breeder that selects a dog based on having a beautiful temperament, on being a pet dog in the family home, if that's what you're looking for. We want them to breed healthy, good genetics. We want them to do all the health checks. You don't want to breed from dogs that are scared, fear, fearful, stressed, anxious, overly boisterous and outgoing. You know, we really want that middle of the range temperament. We want breeders who really care about the breed and want to better the breed. And as a result, are going to breed beautiful dogs. So yeah, I think that's a really, really important take home message is that choosing a good breeder, finding a really good place where your puppy comes from 
isn't just about supporting and not supporting a terrible industry. It's about setting yourselves up for success and actually getting a dog that is going to be a good, well-bred, healthy, you know, sound, you know, good temperament, all that sort of stuff. It's so, so important. I've got a full article on all of this as well, which includes some of the studies and things that have been done to prove this stuff and to really show you why it is so important. I just, I find it so fascinating, all of this stuff. So for us, as I told you guys, golden retriever, no brainer. Um, but I've always loved the dark goldens, not the cream colored goldens. That's just a color preference of mine. But this time around, I promised myself I'm not going to get stuck on that. I'm going to care way more about finding the right dog and the right temperament for our family than just caring about looks. So I have narrowed it down to uh, about four or five breeders that I really like. Uh, due to COVID, it's been a little bit challenging to be able to do visits. Uh, a few of the breeders that I've reached out to are at capacity with uh, taking on any new names on their lists, which is a really huge challenge as well. The breeders have been inundated because of COVID. The demand has been huge for puppies. So I want you to know that if you are looking for a dog from a good breeder, be prepared to wait. Don't just expect to get one right away. If you do get one right away, maybe be cautious, maybe be weary, make sure whatever you do, you go to the breeder, you meet them, you meet the mum. This is so important. Do not buy a puppy when you, the breeder doesn't allow you to come to the property where the mum is hidden and you don't get to see her. All of these things are red flags, okay? You want the breeders to want to meet you. They, want, they should want to interview you because most breeders that care really want to know that their pups are going to a great home. So, it should be sort of like a two-way interview process where you want to interview them and they want to interview you. So that's really important. Make sure you get to go there, you get to meet them, make sure that you like what you see. So when we walked into the house when we got Cooper, they had six very boisterous, jumpy, bouncy, barky golden retrievers. As mentioned, I fell in love with his mum's looks uh, and that just took me. I didn't really take into consideration their temperament. And at the time, I didn't know as much as I know now. They were a beautiful family at the time and they really did get me involved and I was on board and I watched all of the beautiful stuff they did with the puppies in the first eight weeks. And they did do a great job. The temperament of the dogs perhaps weren't totally right for a young family, but at that time we didn't have kids. So it was manageable and we made it work. Cooper was an incredibly uh, excited, boisterous puppy. It took him till about age five to really calm down and, me and mellow out. So we're going to just try this time to find a pup that is a little bit more chilled, uh, but also a puppy that can be okay around children that are a little bit rowdy because my kids are full of energy. So it does need to be that pup a little bit in the middle, not too boisterous and also not a puppy that is highly anxious, nervous and scared around children. So I am going to go out to visit a couple breeders. I am going to go meet with the mums and the breeders, have a bit of an interview process, see how we go. And I will keep you guys updated when we decide who our breeder is gonna be uh, and when the pups will be available. So that's pretty exciting. I am hoping, like I think I mentioned last time, we would love a puppy anytime from February 2022, because that is when my youngest, Brooklyn, will be starting full-time childcare. I wouldn't get a puppy during the school holidays. I think that is unfair on the pup, unfair on you as well, having to manage kids and a puppy over the school holidays. It's just very challenging. Pups need 18 to 20 hours of sleep. They need your attention. You need to be there to help guide them, teach them, train them in those you know first couple of weeks. And having kids, well for me anyway, three kids on school holidays would just be way too much. So making sure my son has started kinder, full-time kinder is really important timing wise. Um, but yeah, so just make sure if you are looking into breeders that you really do make sure that they are ethical, reputable, registered with the ANKC, Australian National Kennel Club or Dogs Victoria or whatever state you're in. Jump onto the ANKC website. There's lots of information on there. Dogs Online is another place where they also have a lot of the registered breeders listed. 
obviously some of you guys don't live in Australia so different rules different regulations in different countries so just make sure that you really look into it you do your research it's so so important in ensuring that your pup has the best start to life if you do have any questions on this this is something I love helping to educate people on so please reach out um, I can absolutely help you on this process as well if you need all right see ya